All right, welcome to Honors Physics, Periodic Motion. Uh, the first thing we're going to go ahead and look at uh, is a quick review. Let me minimize this so it's out of your way. On period, uh, which is looking at our time. And it's our time required to complete one full cycle. Uh, notice here that period is normally designated with a capital letter T. And we discussed this earlier in the year, um, as well as frequency, which we can have measured in hertz. And one hertz is equal to one wave per second, one vibration per second, one occurrence per second. Simply, it's just the number of cycles the object completes per second. Uh, and then if you look below here, we have um, our period and our frequency equations, and they are reciprocals of one another. So one over period is frequency, and one over frequency is period. All right, the first thing I want to jump into is looking at a pendulum. So this pretty good um, video here that shows a, a kind of a couple different things on that. First, I'm going to turn down the sound. There we go. And it's got this really epic intro of 10, 9, 8, 3, 2, 1, all the way down to a less than epic title. But essentially, it's harmonic motion. We're looking at a pendulum. So the first thing we're going to look at is see how length is going to affect our pendulum swing. And I did not perform this uh, lab. This is not my video, but I'm borrowing it, so it should work just fine. Uh, there's a list of his supplies. Not sure where the cell phone tape comes in, but, you know, whatever. Um, so, situation one, we have a length of thread, 20 centimeters, and we have a fixed mass. The key here is we're only changing one variable. Don't look too hard. You might get dizzy. All right, um, you can always calculate your own time, but he came up with um, 10 seconds for its period. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to change the length of this pendulum and see how that affects our period. So now we're increasing it to 30 centimeters. And just by looking at it without even timing, you can see that there is a change in the period. And... Apparently his roommate there with uh, no shoes on. Okay, so it took much longer. Yeah, you better shut the door. Science is happening. Uh, it took much longer, uh, almost two seconds longer for a period at the same height. Now we're increasing it one more time. Our roommate infiltrated again, and he's hanging over here. I think we can see it is longer yet at 13 seconds. So now we're going to head jump into our second part of the experiment and just kind of see. And that's going to be to change the mass at the end of that pendulum. So now we're going to keep the length fixed, but have the mass change. And essentially what he does is he loads uh, this ball with different masses. The first one being 15 grams, and he's going to record the period there. And just like with the length, we're going to do with three different masses. And the first one we get is 9.8 seconds for our period. Trial number two, uh, now with 30 grams, so we've doubled the mass. And we get the same period, even though our mass has increased. So what we're going to do is we're going to try it one more time, now with an even larger mass, and see how that is going to affect our period. Big thumbs up to you too, buddy. And again, we get the same period. So 
that should hopefully uh, bring you to the conclusion that the length of the pendulum is going to be the key factor in the period. And mass is not going to contribute it. So if I come over here and show you the formula for a pendulum, our period has nothing to do with mass. It's simply about the length as well as the acceleration of gravity. Now, this is a very useful formula with uh, using a pendulum because on different points in the Earth, we actually have gravi different gravitational accelerations. So we can calculate G based on a pendulum's period. Moving on, we have more than just uh, a pendulum as our simple harmonic motion. We can also look um, at Hooke's Law, which you may remember when we were talking about springs earlier. And essentially, what we have is our force is equal to negative k times our distance or displacement. Now, I want to point out, because there seemed to be some confusion here about this negative sign. So this negative sign indicates that the force is opposite the direction of whatever you're stretching or compressing. And this formula is very similar to a pendulum. However, instead of having our length and gravity, now we're going to use our mass and our spring constant here. One other thing I want to point out is when we're talking about um, masses on a spring, we deal with this thing called amplitude. And amplitude is talking about our maximum displacement that an object achieves from its equilibrium position. And when we do a lab later on in the week, both with pendulums and masses on springs, one of the things that I run into is that when it's not stretched, in other words, when there's no mass on it at all, it has one equilibrium position. However, if I put a mass on the end of it, it stretches it out even if there is no harmonic motion. This new length here becomes our equilibrium position. And we would measure that motion from that equilibrium position. All right. Until next time, boys and girls.